Almighty God, as we contemplate your word, I pray that your Holy Spirit would come among us in power to help us understand it, to help us take it into our lives, to help us apply it and live it every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So the other day I saw a commercial which was rather interesting. A man was selling a vacuum cleaner, the normal stuff, but he had his competitor's vacuum cleaners there and he hooked this clear tube to each vacuum uh, into the section that does the suctioning. And in the first vacuum cleaner, he started putting ping pong balls into the clear tube. And after seven ping pong balls, the vacuum would no longer suction and hold up any more ping pong balls. It was a, a long tube, maybe four or five feet long. So he said, see, not, not a lot of ping pong balls, not a lot of suction in that particular vacuum cleaner, his competitor's vacuum. The second vacuum cleaner was the same competitor, same manufacturer, but a, quote, better model. So he started putting more ping pong balls in the tube. Past the seven mark and past 10 ping pong balls, 15, 20 ping pong balls were held up by that vacuum cleaner in the tube. He said, well, that's pretty impressive. Then he pulled out his vacuum cleaner and he started putting ping pong balls in it. The first ball zipped up the tube faster than any of the balls did on the other vacuums. And he said, well, that told me something about this vacuum. And he started adding more ping pong balls. 10, 20, 25, all the way up to 30 ping pong balls. And he said, isn't that impressive, the suction power of this vacuum cleaner? <clears throat> I wanted to ask him, well, fine suctions of ping pong balls. What about the dirt in your carpet? <laughs> Isn't it interesting how our society will use any method whatsoever to try and sell you a vacuum cleaner? I'll never forget the mistake that Leona and I made when we let a vacuum cleaner salesman into our home <laughs> one day about 30 years ago. Let me read today's epistle lesson again uh, from the NIV version. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish. But understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is a very powerful message that Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus, and it's near the end of the, the entire letter that he wrote to them. And there's a few points I want to pull out of this today's passage, but in relationship to what he has already written to them. The first is, be very careful how you live. Earlier in the letter, he talked about how they had come out of a life of sin. And he also warned them earlier in the letter not to return to their old ways. Because the days are evil. It's very easy to be led astray and back into our old ways. We must be careful today, you and I, because the world is very powerfully trying to pull us away into an evil way of thinking. I've got a vacuum cleaner at home, works just fine. That guy on the TV was trying to get me to buy another. That's how the world tries to pull us away from what we have learned about God and God's ways. 
Number two, uh, Paul said, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Foolish would be, obviously, following what the world says is right and good. And believe me, that message is very powerful. Voices are speaking to us with the world's message. Over and over and over again, many different ways. Wisdom is learning about God and what He teaches and following that. So, how do we learn about God and His ways? Well, we read and study the Bible. The Bible is God's revelation of himself to the world and his plan of how he will bring us out of our old sinful ways into a new way of life and righteousness. But we won't know anything about it unless we read it. When I get that new vacuum cleaner, first thing I do is I read the manual. Some of us don't read the manual. We just shove it together and start using it, and then we wonder why it doesn't work right. Because we miss the switch that actually turns on the suction. you got to read the instruction manual, if you will. It's God's revelation to us. Third, be filled with the Spirit. And earlier in the letter, Paul said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Grieving the Holy Spirit means going back to your old ways, leading a sinful life, indulging yourself in those things. It doesn't mean you've given up your salvation, but it means you're giving in to your old nature and the ways of the world that is trying to pull you away from God. That grieves the Holy Spirit. And then in another place, Paul says, pray in the Holy Spirit at all times. We are called to pray. And then in another place, he said this, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Our inner being. When we are strengthened by the Spirit of God in our lives, it gives us the wherewithal to say no to the world. But when we try and live the faith, when we try and live as a Christian in the world on our own strength, we're bound to fail. We need God's help. And lastly, I think Benjamin will appreciate this particular point. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. I love to sing and make music out loud and in my heart to the Lord. Someone once said, he who sings prays twice. Because when we sing, we're worshiping the Lord, but... Singing also includes prayer very often. We're called to love God. We say it every Sunday here in church as we remember the great commandments. We're called to love God and oftentimes people wonder how do we do that? We do that as we sing songs of praise to God as we worship Him on Sunday mornings. And also... When we sing and make music unto the Lord, it lifts us up out of our misery. How many of us are struggling just to get out of bed in the morning because we're so miserable? Sing and make music unto the Lord, even if you don't feel like it. And what happens is it gives space in your heart for the Holy Spirit. And when God is dwelling within you, there's far less room for misery. 
So how do we avoid the snares of the world? The vacuum cleaner salesmen of the world. Sorry if anybody sells vacuums here in the church. I apologize. This is just an illustration. There are many things we can do. Many, many different things we can do as Christians. I'm just talking about three of them today. Know God's Word. If you don't know what it is, how can you say no to what the world is in? Be filled with God's Spirit. Start every day as you're praying. Ask, ask God to fill you with His Spirit. And He will. Then spend time singing and worshiping the Lord. And I'm not just talking about Sunday morning. Maybe turn your radio to a Christian radio station that has songs and hymns on it that you can sing along with or at least listen to. Maybe you don't feel like you can sing, but no one else is in the car, so they can't hear you anyway. Sing and make music unto the Lord. What I want to encourage you to do is to not make the mistake of being a ping pong ball. That is perfect. Almighty God, you know the forces that are arrayed against us, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And Father, I pray that you would help each one of us to resist the devil, to know you, and to know your ways. Help us, Father, in this fight, to live for you each day, to follow you 